Okay, welcome everybody to Go in 5 Minutes, episode 17. So today we're going to focus on the standard library's error interface. We're going to really talk about uh, how and why you should create your own implementations of the error interface uh, instead of just relying on format.errorf or errors.new um, on their own. So first of all, the error interface. The error interface is no different than any other interface, either in the standard library or elsewhere except that it's a little bit special because it starts with a lowercase letter, but it's exported. It just starts with a lowercase letter because it's in the built-in standard library uh, instead of another package. So we can already actually see some examples of custom error variables excuse me, in the I.O. package. So you see there's EOF, you've probably seen that before, closed pipe, no progress, so on and so forth. But if you notice, these are only exported variables, they're not types, so they don't necessarily carry context of what actually went wrong specifically in that function call. So if you get back in EOF, for example, uh, if you've used the IO package a lot, you've probably seen EOFs come back, uh, but EOF is not really that helpful if you see it in like a log output or the output of a CLI. It just says EOF and there's nothing else. So we're gonna focus on uh, some initial ways to provide some more context specific to that function call that created the error. So let's talk about creating our own implementations with some code. So first of all, we've got some sample code here and we're going to focus first on the actual function call. So this is a package called pkg. We have one exported function that has functionality to do a divide. Now everyone's probably familiar with divide. We use some terminology here. Dividend is the part on top of the division, and divisor is the part on the bottom. We take care of some edge cases. You can't divide by zero, so we return an error variable, similar to EOF, called error divide by zero. We don't want to let people divide by one, because that might indicate a mistake. So we're returning an error divide by one error variable. Again, this is similar to EOF in the IL package. And then here, we don't want to return a fraction, meaning we don't want the bottom part of the division to be greater than the top part. So here is where we're returning that error type, which carries that context along with it. So not only are we returning an error, we're also returning the values that cause that error. And again, these are specific to the individual function call to div. And then of course, there's a success path here. Additionally, if you notice here, these two error variables and this error type are not exported, but we do have three functions that go along with them here that are exported. And these are simply functions that check to see if an arbitrary error is of that type or, or value. So here we're seeing if E is the error div by zero value or E is equal to the error div by one value or here if E is of the error divisor GT dividend type. And one more note, uh, we've guaranteed here in the Go doc that div will not return any other errors besides those three. And you can of course check those three as I just mentioned by using those three functions. So before we check out how to use uh, this package, and in particular the div package and the errors it returns, I want to call out our sponsor Minio. Uh, Minio is an object or uh, excuse me, an object storage server designed to be very minimal, hence the name, and scalable. It enables app developers to build their own Amazon S3 compatible storage without any special storage skills. And I really love Minio because they're huge contributors to the Go community and they're a group of great people. So I really, really encourage you to go check out Minio itself at Minio.io and all the open source code that they contribute at github.com slash Minio. And they're also on Gitter chat. So you can always go hang out with them on Gitter at gitter.im slash Minio slash Minio. So let's get back to checking out how this package is used. So first of all, we've got our little function that uses package.div. So we just have i and j, we're gonna do i divided by j here. And then we check the possible errors that div could return. We've got the divide by zero check, with the divide by one check, and then the fraction check. It was the divisor greater than the dividend. And that would, in this case, mean is j greater than i. Now, if we go back to that last one, the divider GT dividend error, this is the divisor GT dividend error type, and it conforms to the error interface by implementing this method. The simple method just has error with no parameters, and it returns a string. 
And this string is where we're returning that context-specific information. This is, in this case, the context-specific stuff is the divisor and the dividend. And we're passing that context-specific stuff in here, where, right where we return the error. So let's go see this all in action. We're just going to make build and then make run it. Now this is exactly what we uh, anticipated in our main function. So if we go back to our main, we can see we expected to see a divide by zero error, then a divide by one error. Those would both be error variables. And then here we would have our divisor greater than divider, uh, excuse me, divisor greater than dividend error. And that would be the error we expected to see the context in it. And then we've got a succeed one as well. So here we go, we've got the divisor is zero, divisor is one, nothing too interesting there. And then here's the interesting one. This is where we tried to do a one divided by two, and we actually have that contextual information right there in it. Divisor two is greater than dividend one. And then of course we've got a successful one here just to show up what that looks like. So four divided by two does indeed equal two. So that's it for today. I uh, really encourage you to go check out your packages and libraries in, in addition to some of your code in general. Whether it's open source or closed source, uh, these kind of error types can really, really help you out. Um, in fact, even if you just create an error variable, you can give a caller just a concrete handle on something to check for instead of checking for something like an error string, which can change over time. So really encourage you to go check that out. Uh, this isn't a pattern that you have to wholesale opt in for either. Uh, this is something you can just make maybe a change on one or two of your functions and see how it works. Um, observe how the errors show up in your logs, for example. Um, but otherwise, very, very useful pattern. Um, and uh, there's going to be more where that come and come from, excuse me, in uh, future episodes. So that's all for today. Thanks, everyone. Take care.